Okay, over the past few years, I've become a little obsessed with camera gear, and I really love hearing how these creators make some of the videos that I enjoy here on YouTube. So today I'm asking eight of the top sports technology reviewers what cameras they use. And quick disclaimer here, you know, I'm all about encouraging people to start a YouTube channel. I just think that, you know, all of us have something that we can contribute and I don't want you guys to hesitate because you don't have the right camera. You know, pull some sort of recording device out, you know, whether that's a phone or a GoPro or whatever and uh, record it and post it. Don't watch this video and just think that you need some sort of specific piece of gear before you can start. But I asked these guys what kind of gear they had and here is what they said. So when somebody does ask me this question, I usually like to start off by saying, you don't necessarily need something super fancy to make a good video. To make a good video, you need to have good audio, good lighting, but most importantly, good content. And whether that's gonna be entertaining content or informative content. And to kind of illustrate this fact, one of my highest performing videos, well, I was out of focus nearly the entire video, but people seem to still like the information I was providing. So if you're wanting to start a YouTube channel, I would suggest to focus on your content first and the gear a little bit later. So the first few videos that I did on my channel, I used my smartphone, which I think is what a lot of people do. And then I transitioned to a Panasonic G5, which I think is a fantastic camera, by the way. And then I heavily invested into the Panasonic Micro Four Third System with a couple GH5s, which I used for about three years. And then as of last year, I recently moved to the Sony full frame system. So my main camera that I have for my studio shots right now is a Sony a7C, and that's paired up with a Sigma 35 millimeter 1.4 art lens. And then I have the image from that being recorded on a Tomos Ninja Inferno external recorder. And then I have also a Tascam DR40 serving as an XLR adapter as well as redundant audio recording. And then for audio, I use an Octava XLR microphone as well as a Rode Video Micro as a backup audio source. And then for my B-roll camera slash travel camera, I use a Sony a7S III. And then I have that paired up with a Sony G 24 to 105 f4 and i just really like the versatility of this zoom range but what's funny about a lot of the b-roll that you see in my videos is that a lot of that's filmed with my iphone just because i'm usually out on the trail mountain biking or running and i'm just not going to bring something like this with me and the image quality that comes out of this thing is phenomenal and then i also use a gopro hero 10 as well as 9 for situations where i don't want to worry about dropping my phone and i also use this quite a bit for mountain biking oh and i almost forgot about drones so for image quality i like the dji mavic air 2s i really like the form factor of the original Mavic Air though, but the image quality is just so much better on this thing, but it's just a little bit chunkier. But in terms of active track, in terms of being able to automatically follow me, well, I don't use this. <laughs> I definitely use the Skydio 2 and the autonomous tracking out of this thing is seriously mind blowing. So yeah, that's my current setup as of the end of 2021. And I'm, honestly, I don't really foresee myself changing it because all this stuff does work pretty well for me at this point. Uh, what camera gear do I use? Uh, I use a couple of different things. For the most part, I'm using a GoPro on a selfie stick. I use an extendable selfie stick uh, to capture most of my stuff. But sometimes I'll also use the uh, Insta360 ONE X2. Uh, and that's something that's also on an extendable selfie stick. Sometimes, like if I'm on a bike or if I'm in a really tight situation uh, or when I'm just vlogging, I might also put a GoPro onto this little kind of like um, alligator clamp. And then you can either set it down for some vlogging, so in case you wanna to talk to the camera like this, or if you wanna use it as kind of like a hand grip, uh, it's a nice little stubby uh, hand grip that can also fit into a pocket, not while you're running, but if you need to like, while you're vlogging, going out during the day and just wanna be able to tuck a camera away, whether it's in a pocket or in the bottle pocket of like a backpack, this is a setup that works really well. So that is the typical camera gear. I'll test lots of other stuff, but those are the kind of the main things that I'm using the GoPro Hero 10, the Insta360 ONE X2, and a couple of different kinds of sticks and mounts. What camera slash film gear do you use to make your videos? Oh, that's a good question. I am Captain Overkill when it comes to making my videos. Uh, I guess the first camera I use, I'm holding right now, this is the uh, iPhone 13 Pro. Uh, I've been using this a lot for 
a surprising amount of shots because you can actually get kind of shallow depth of field with the camera on this, which is pretty cool. But in the studio here, I've got a lot going on. Uh, my A camera that I'm filming on right now is the Sony FX3. And then my overhead camera that I got above me here that I do all of my top down shots with currently is the Sony ZV-E10. That's a crop sensor body. But generally speaking, I shoot on Sony because they're interchangeable with each other. So I can take the lens off of that, put it on this and it's pretty convenient. And of course the final camera I use all the time is gonna be the GoPro Hero 10 Black or the Hero 9 Black. Occasionally I do dust off the Insta360 uh, X2, which is a, a 360 camera and I really like using that as well. Uh, yeah, I could probably talk for an hour about that, but I'll stop there. Those are the cameras I use. What camera gear, uh, film gear do you use to make your videos? I've got a lot of gear, but I think ultimately I kind of go back to three core things. Uh, one is my phone, uh, two are GoPros, primarily the Hero 9 and 10 lately, uh, and three are these cameras right here. So a Panasonic GH5 uh, there, B-roll, and then one over there, A-roll. Uh, this crazy contraption here is an entire jib from uh, Edelkrone, uh, and it's got automated camera. It's like a little camera robot system um, that I can use to get really fancy shots. Uh, I don't get as many fancy shots as I'd like uh, just because I it's kind of like the last thing I tend to do and I usually run out of time but um, one of these days I will get more shots from that and it'll be more fun uh, but otherwise it's mostly pretty straightforward kind of cameras. None of my cameras here are super new. Um, I also have one that I use for still photography that is like seven years old now. Uh, that's probably getting close to replacement. Uh, Nikon D500 uh, that I use for most of my still shots. Uh, but a ton of stuff comes from the phone these days. It's just kind of woven in there and made to look the same. I have two main cameras. I use the Canon EOS R6 uh, for my main shots. And for uh, my B-rolls, I use a Canon 90D. And depending on what I'm doing, I have used uh, my GoPro, uh, the Insta360, and lately I've been using my iPhone 13 Pro for a lot of shots and plan on using it a lot more in coming videos. So for my YouTube and filmmaking gear, it's pretty different if we're talking about YouTube versus uh, documentary filmmaking, but for YouTube specifically, uh, I feel like I keep it pretty simple. Uh, it's definitely not the most brand new stuff out there on the market or the highest spec gear you can possibly get. Uh, I've had a Sony a7 III for a long, long time. That's my main camera. The main lens is a Sony GM 16-35. And um, a lot of the times when you see this uh, studio shot setup. It's fed into a Ninja uh, that's recorded externally so that I can get a little bit different files to work with. Uh, the audio is a Sennheiser MKE 600 microphone that's right here just out of frame and that's recorded on a Zoom H6 recorder and then I sync them up in post. So that's my like studio a shot that's what it is pretty much the whole time and for all the running content that's on here i do not run around with my sony camera uh, i use a gopro hero 10 and uh this little selfie stick most of the time sometimes it's a bigger one uh, but i pretty much upgrade the gopro every single year so i'm always kind of on the newest version of that but that's pretty much it like i try to keep it pretty simple i try to keep the workflow the same all the time so that uh, i can get videos out quicker you know this like a shot is always the same gear, always the same stuff. Every once in a while, I'll throw on a lav mic if I'm in a different part of the room or outside or something. With documentary filmmaking stuff, I usually rent a ton of gear and that can get really complicated and a lot of extra stuff. So for YouTube, I try to keep it as simple as possible. What's up, Matt's motivators? When it comes to the current camera gear that I'm using, well, right now it's the iPhone 12 in the wide angle mode. I tend to follow the approach that you use whatever the best camera is that is the easiest for you to use. So I tend to save a fair bit of money on camera gear, sometimes filming with an iPhone, sometimes just a straight up GoPro Hero 7. And then when it comes to our main shooting camera, it's the Sony A7C because that gives you the nice tilty flippy screen and it's cheap enough that if you break it, you're not spending tens of thousands of dollars to replace it. So that's all my camera gear right now. Thanks, Matt. What camera and film gear do I use to make my videos? Sometimes, but a mixture. I started off with a Canon G7X Mark II. When the G7X Mark III came out, I 
purchased that straight away and that was the biggest regret. That's a useless camera, it's terrible. The camera I'm filming this on right now is the GH5, but to be honest, most of what I do these days and most of what everyone does can be just simply done on an iPhone. Camera tech has progressed amazingly in the last few years, especially on the phones, making this thing an expensive dinosaur that I'm filming on. Okay, um, I guess to answer my own question, uh, I don't think I should have to answer my own questions. Uh, this is me, I'm interviewing you guys. Uh, but I use the Sony a7S III for kind of like the main camera with a lot of like the talking head stuff and a uh, variety of different lenses. I, I really like to do kind of like macro shots and get in close on like product videos and things like that. Uh, and then a lot of the action stuff, I use uh, the GoPro. This is the GoPro Hero 10, but I have a couple of different GoPros. Um, yeah, that's great because it's durable. Uh, otherwise, you know, I, I like using my phone. That works too. Um, as far as just kind of like if you're out and about and you need to get a shot. Uh, I do have a drone that I love using. Um, I, I recently got a new drone, uh, but I don't think I've ever posted any videos with that just yet, but it's the, a DJI Mavic 3. And the one that I've posted before, all of the drone footage from this channel has been the DJI Mavic Air, the original one, not the nice new Air. So uh, I think that, you know, anything that you can do to capture decent footage, most of it comes down to the edit, right? You know, like, so whether the video is coming from your phone or your GoPro or whatever, you know, put some effort into the edit and things will look pretty decent. So. Uh, that being said, huge thanks to these guys for taking the time to make this video. I'm going to leave all of the links to their channels in the description of this video. You guys can check that out whenever you guys want to. And normally I'd sign off, but I think I'm going to leave you guys with Ray today. You can just tell it to go anywhere I want to and it, it does its thing. Except when the app crashes, like it actually just did right then there. That happens a lot for an expensive camera rig, don't you? Yep, you do. You just move around. Do your thing sometimes. Most of the time your batteries just die because there's no off switch for no particular good reason. Who makes a system like this without an off switch? Who makes 